Hello, full sailors. Welcome to this truly inspiring Hall of Fame session. My name is Katrina Green, and I'm part of your alumni relations team. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Please make sure that you are using your full real name, especially if you're trying to get credit for class or for GPS points. Next up, be sure to use the chat window uh, to communicate with each other. Just keep it professional and on topic. And if you have any questions directed at demo, make sure that you put them in the Q&A box. This 2001 Recording Arts alumnus that's gonna be heading our session up today has over two decades of entertainment industry experience and continuous growth to transitioning from being a highly sought after recording and mixing engineer, producer, credited in over 50 million records sold to achieving Grammy nominated and Grammy winning producer and engineer status. Determined to reach new heights, he consulted on music major award shows such as Grammys, the Billboard Music Awards, even helping to produce Madonna Emmy nominated Super Bowl halftime show. With such a long history of working alongside peak performing superstar artists such as Madonna, Jay-Z, Rihanna, Timbaland, Justin Timberlake, Lady Gaga, and more, Demo discovered a passion for helping individuals and teams realize their full potential through thoughtful cultivation of high performing habits and mindsets. Today, he's an international life strategist, strategic performance consultant, coach, the co-founder and the chairman of Feel Good Now. Please welcome Full Sail Hall of, Five, Hall of Fame Five inductee, Demo Casanova. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, Katrina. Give it up for Katrina. Virtual clap, virtual clap, virtual clap. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be here with all of you. It's, um, it's always nice to get here and talk to my full sail brethren. And um, as I was speaking to Katrina and Jason, everyone earlier today, I feel that this is one of the most incredible times to get into the entertainment business. As Katrina said, I have two decades of doing this. And um, for the first time in my two decades of doing this, I feel like the time that we're in now is prime for being able to achieve your goals and whatever it is that you want to achieve in your careers. I feel there's so many things that have happened in the past year to be able to set anybody up and position them to win that it's really bountiful, the things that you can do in your life with a couple key things. So over the past year, like most people, I, um, I've had a renaissance in a lot of ways. Of course, we've all know that the past year, a lot of things have changed. The world that we live in isn't the same as it was in 2019, but yet a couple key things that, oh, that have been around for centuries that equate to success are still valid. Yet through the past year, I've discovered three things that I'm gonna share with you throughout this presentation that if you incorporate them in your life, it'll fast track anything you want. And most importantly, help you achieve anything is that, that you wanna achieve in your life. So how, how did we get here? Obviously, when the pandemic hit, um, well, speaking for myself, when the pandemic hit, I, I, was, I was on a ride. Like for the first time in a couple of years, I was working on some music that I was really inspiring me. Um, I felt can really take my career to a whole other level. Uh, my consulting business was doing amazing. I had 11 consulting clients that were all had the potential to be the next Airbnbs. I had 50 speaking engagements with over half a million dollars of guaranteed revenue throughout the year. I mean, this is like epic for me because I've been working to be a speaker for the past six or seven years. And I felt like I finally like crossed the cusp, all that hard work, all those free gigs, all those times speaking at the, at the JCC and, and all my free talks have finally got me to a point where I was going to get paid a lot of money to speak and speak in front of a lot of audiences. So life was rolling. And I got out of Hall of Fame, and um, literally two weeks later, we went into a national lockdown. And within one month, 10 out of the 11 businesses I was consulting for were completely out of business. The one that was left furloughed most of his employees, and within two months, they went out of business. That was done. Within two weeks, all 50 of my speaking engagements, at that point, it was like 45 because I'd already done five, had canceled all their events. And the music projects I was working on, well, one of the artists was Italian. So he got caught in a lockdown, nothing. And the other artist was Mexican descent and same thing. So here I was coming in February, looking at having this most incredible year of my life to now March, like most people stuck wondering what's going to happen now. So 
one of the strategies I've learned throughout my life is when you don't know what to do, you sit and you watch, you observe and you see, and most importantly, you think. So I spent the next couple months looking at the landscape and I came across that there were three types of people that were emerging from the pandemic. The first one were the ones that were, they, they were losing. They were losing bad. They had lost their jobs. Some had uh, got lost their health. Some of them were being affected by the pandemic in itself. Some of them had even caught the, the virus. So there was a lot of things they were just losing. And there were another group of people that they just were kind of staying lukewarm. So they might've lost their job, but they went and got a job. Maybe they, they lost, you know, a little bit of salary, but they still had a job. Yeah, sure. Maybe they weren't working as much, but they were home more. So th their life didn't really change much. But I noticed that a small percentage of people were winning and winning big. Some I knew personally. I had a friend of mine. I've known him my entire life. And I'm going to tell you, folks, this man was always had a J-O-B. He was just over broke. He most, I mean, this dude, most he ever made in one year was 60,000. He owed 90,000. I mean, life was bad. Yet the first month of the pandemic, he made $80,000. Two months later, he made $100,000. Last month, he had a $400,000 month. Now, my friend is not the smartest person I've ever met. He is um, pretty average in a lot of ways. Yet, he, just like many other people that were winning, noticed one thing that was emerging from the pandemic. And this is the first thing that you need to observe in your life in order to know and to be successful, which is where is the need for what it is you do? You see, my friend had been in the janitorial business and he had um, worked with cleaning chemicals and stuff like that throughout his career. And when the pandemic was emerging, he quickly switched over to hand sanitizers and masks. So when the world was running out of masks, he had over 5 million masks that he was sitting on and sold them at a very good affordable rate. He wanted to make sure everyone can get masks, but still, just because he had stock, he saw the need, he filled it. So in my own life, I started looking and saying, well, where is the need? Where's the need here? There's, there's something going on here because throughout centuries, people have, have had uber success at times of the craziest, craziest things happening, like the Great Depression, even in the recession. So many people win big when things go wrong. So I was saying, well, where is the need for what I do? And I noticed streaming. I was like, whoa, this streaming thing is really taking off. Zoom just got 400 million something new users when they only had like 10 million before. This is going to be a thing. So I, in my life, started looking at streaming and how I can get more into the streaming business. And you got to ask yourself, where is the need? So the first thing you need to use, there's going to be three of them. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get perspective. That is the word we're going to use, perspective. And what is perspective? Perspective is your mental view or your outlook. You see, the people that are winning and are going to win big look at life differently than those that don't. I didn't look at the pandemic as it was a cataclysmic event, even though in my life, you would have saw the things that were happening. You would have said, yo, this, this is bad, bro. Like, I just kept saying, God, there has to be some here. There has to be some here. Like, there has to be some here. Where is the need? Where is the need? Where is the need in the workforce that you can fill? You see, right now, I think it's the greatest time. And I know I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep saying this because I I really believe this. I think this is the greatest time to go after what it is you want. If you know where the need is, you can fill it. And the great thing is that now there's this whole virtual world that got introduced that wasn't there before. So everybody there is on the same playing field. So where is the need? Where is the need? Asking yourself where is the need. The next thing you have to do is you have to believe you can fill that need. See, some of you want to be great producers. You want to be great directors, great animators. And you want that so badly, yet you don't believe you can actually do it. See, folks, that's where you need to stop right then and there. You know, throughout centuries, for, for centuries, centuries, man thought it was impossible to run the four-minute mile. 
I mean, the damn Romans used to tie people to horses to try to get them to the four minute mile. They couldn't do it. It pretty much was deemed impossible that the four minute mile could not be achieved. Yet in 1954, a Brit by the name of Roger Bannister ran the mark in four minutes, under four minutes. Folks, two months later, an Australian named John Landy did it. And since then, hundreds, thousands of people have ran the four minute mile. It's pretty much a benchmark now for athletic performance. Anything can be done. You just got to believe you can do it. And if you don't believe you can do it, go find somebody else that's doing what you're doing and ask them to show you how to do it. He will say, well, how did you get to work on so many records and get in with people like Timbaland and work with like the Dr. Dre's of the world and, and the Missy's and the Madonna's and the Jay-Z's? Well, it didn't, I didn't just wake up and get there. It was to trial and error. But the biggest thing that got me there was I consistently asked people that were doing what I wanted to do to show me how to do it. Full sale grads, other Hall of Famers are at your disposal, yet most people don't ask. Well, how do you do that? Leslie, how is it that you and Cardi B make all these records? How do you do that? Stephen Barris, how did you become vice president of HBO? Like, how, how did you do that? Show me. So belief. So first thing you do is get perspective. Get perspective on where I am in life. And most importantly, ask the question of what is it that I want and where is the need? I've figured out there was a formula that I, I learned this formula way back when, and uh, I found it true to be in the pandemic. I'm going to share it with you guys because it's a real easy formula. And it's just something to keep in mind as you, as you go through your career and your life. And the formula is quite easy. It's called E plus R equals O. And what that means, let me put it up here, is event plus response equals outcome. You see, most people make the mistake of blaming the event when something happens. Oh, the pandemic happened. That's why I lost my job. Oh, I've been at home with these kids. They're driving me crazy. And my partner, I, I spent too much time with them. And that's why things are falling apart. You see, most of the people that I found that were losing was because they were blaming the event. Now, most of the people I found that were winning had a different point of view. See, they weren't blaming the event. Their point of power came from the way they responded to the event. Like my friend, when his business cash down, he didn't sit there and go, oh, man, it's over. He said, yo, wait, there's an opportunity here. Damn, people are going to need masks. I got the hookup for the mask. I'm going to get into the mask business. Damn, I got a lot of hand sanitizer. I'm sure I'm going to start going with this hand sanitizer. See, he changed his response to the event while everybody else was sitting there blaming it. And this outcome change. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it is your responsibility. Well, let's look at the word responsibility. It's your, it's made up of two words, responsibility, your ability to respond. The way you respond to the things that are happening in your life are going to determine the outcome. If you go out to get a job and you don't get that job, person says, you know, we just, we just don't have any space for you right now, but thank you for coming out. And you go home and say, oh my God, I'm not worthy. You respond and say, I'm not worthy. I am never going to have a job. Uh, I paid all this money at full sale and I'm never going to do it. Oh, it's not going to happen for me. Guess what? The outcome is it's probably not going to happen for you. However, same scenario. You go to your first interview and they say, sorry, listen, we don't have a position. And you walk out and then you say, oh, you know what? He, he can't recognize. He don't know talent when he sees it. I'm the greatest thing that's happened. I'm going to do some great stuff. You know what? I'm going to take my learn. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to get better. And uh, I'm going to go try it again. And you try it again. And you try it again. And you try it again. Guess what? Eventually, the outcome is you get the job you want. You keep getting and your career goes. You see, most people blame the event. When you blame up the event, you're giving your power away. Folks, don't, don't give your power away to others. Not to an event and not to anybody else. To be successful, you need a couple key things. You got to give up blaming, complaining, justifying, defending, excuse making. Oh, God, this pandemic has really screwed everything up. It's not going to work for me. Oh, man, there's no jobs out there because things aren't working. It's just the, the industry's all screwed up. Well, I, I can't get a job because everything's so bad. Well, I haven't been able to finish up this because I have so much going on. 
oh yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm going to do that later. Like folks, you got to give up all these things to be successful because the one thing, these are all choices, but you always have a choice about the most important thing. And that's your attitude. You see your attitude determines your altitude in life. And once you have this perspective with the right attitude and being able to respond to the events that are happening in your life, anything is possible. Now, the second thing, once you have perspective is the second P we're going to have the three P's what we're going to call it. The second P is your performance. Now, what is performance? Performance is the actor style of performing a work or role before an audience. Now, what does that mean? You see, to be a wealthy producer, you can't act like a broke beat maker. You can't. You got to act as if. See, I'm not into this whole fake it till you make it thing. Because fake it till you make it, you make dumb decisions. Oh, everybody goes out. Well, when this happens again and people start going back out to clubs, <laughs> you know, everybody goes out. You got $10 to your pocket. You spend $100 on a bottle. Guess what? You still broke. That's fake it till you make it. That, don't, that, that doesn't make any sense. I like acting as if, well, if I was a successful producer, what would I do? Well, for one, how would I speak? How would I present myself? How would I dress? Who would be the people I would be surrounding myself with? I told you guys earlier, I started a streaming business, right? Because I honestly needed something to do because I had all this free time in my hands and um, I, I wanted to earn some money because, shoot, hey, what else is one going to do, right? I need to make a living too. So I started the streaming business. Well, at the time, I, I'm an audio dude, right? That's my mentality. I'm an audio guy. I don't know anything about video. I don't know nothing about broadcasting. How am I going to get into the streaming business? Because my, my idea was to do high quality streams at, at, at a low affordable price so that I can target small businesses and these other um, individuals that are looking to expand their message. So I started thinking, well, what does a successful producer in broadcasting, how does he act? Okay, one, he hangs out with other video people. So I started looking for other video people. Started calling my boy. Yo, man, who does video? Yo, yeah, yeah. Yo, Rob does video. Oh, cool. Yeah, man, Winston's a great camera guy. So I said, yo, Winston, what's up, man? What you doing here? Yeah, you want to get a coffee? Well, no, we got this pandemic thing going. Well, shoot, let me Uber you some. Let me Uber you some coffee, and then let's 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 have a conversation over Zoom. And all my friends now that I've been hanging out with for the past six months now are all video people. So I've learned about lighting. I learned all about these things just because I started acting as if I was this broadcast producer. So I started surrounding myself around broadcasting people. See, I use the word performance because I think of actors, right? And it says, you know, work a role before an audience. Your audience is the world, but you're the actor. You're the star of your show. So what does an actor have to do to prepare for a role? I'm going to see if y'all awake in the chat. What does an actor have to do to prepare for a role? Somebody give me some. Research. That's a great one, William. You're right. That's the first thing one has to do. They have to research. They have to study the role. Okay, I'm going to play a banker, yet I don't know nothing about banking. I need to figure that out. That's right. They need to transform. They can't just be them. They have to be the part. Talk to people who are similar roles. Absolutely. Go find your peers. See who else has played a role similar to that. Yo, how did you do that? What did you research? Keith, absolutely, you need to practice. Practice, practice, practice. That all falls under preparation. Alexander rehearsals, absolutely. See, you got to be prepared. You got to be prepared. Right now, while you're here, you have to prepare yourself for what's going to happen when you leave Full Sail. Countless grads, countless, countless, countless grads reach out to me via social media in some form after graduation for, and they say, man, I just graduated. Now what do I do? I said, well, what have you been doing? Well, I've been focused on school. Now I'm graduated. I want to get focused on getting a job. Okay. Okay. Well, what have you done so far? Well, I got my resume. Okay. Well, where do you want to work? I don't know. I just want a job. Okay. You know, I find that most of those grads, even though I do my best to help them point them in the right direction, it's like a crapshoot. The grads that really do well, I mean, do well post-graduation, identify early on through the time that they're in their program what it is they want to do. So they come in there and they say, well, I want to do a lot of things. You know, I want to be a producer, but I want to have my own label. And then, you know, I like film and I want to build websites. Okay. 
but they end up narrowing it down to something that they really want to put 80% of their focus time in. It's all right to have a side hustle. I used to be like, yo, don't do a side hustle. No side hustles. Focus on one thing. Um, I found that to be a very narrow. And nowadays, you know, if you can do more, do it. But I still say you got to put most of your eggs in that basket that you're going to cook the omelet in. Because if not, folks, you ain't going to have an omelet. It's not going to happen. And the point is to get the omelet because the omelet is good. You know what I mean? So what is it that you want to do? See, if you start preparing now, start doing research, start figuring out where are the production houses I want to work at, who are the people, who are the employers that make the decisions? If you do that now and you remember the key sentence I said about perspective, you figure out where is the need. I'm going to give you all the trick to getting any job you want. I'm gonna, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it for y'all right now. It just came to me. I said, you know what? I'm going to share it because I feel like this is, this is going to be the group that's going to change it all right now. And here it is. During the interview process, most people go through the interview process and they get interviewed by the interviewee. And they sit there. The interviewee asks questions and the interviewed answers the questions. Rightfully so, right? Here's the trick to flipping that on its heel. If you do this three out of five times, it's going to knock it out of the park. One out of those, one of those, they're going, to, they're going to remember who you are. And one person, well, they weren't the hire for you anyways. At any point during the conversation, when it's appropriate, you ask the question of, let me ask you, let's say the person's name, let's say the hire is, is the interviewee is uh, Katrina. You say, Katrina, I'm, I'm curious. Where do you see is the biggest need right now in your business? Substitute business for studio, production house. Where, where's the need? Like, where do you see that there could be the most improvement? Katrina is then going to answer. She's going to sit there and take a step back like, okay. And she'll say, well, you know, we have customer service issues. That hasn't really been, been, been going so well. Or, you know, we, we have a need in fulfilling shipments that need to go out to certain clients at which point whatever the need is all you have to say is oh i would love the opportunity to be able to help you with that here's the reason why i have great customer service and this is why i have experience in customer service by doing xyz or I'm a really good people person. I do my best to make others feel comfortable and I treat everyone with respect and X, Y, Z. Whatever it is that is the need that you can feel, you just fill in the blank. So all you have to ask is where is the need in the business? Wait for their response. And they say, I would love the opportunity to help you with that. That's all you need to do. Every time you interview, just bring that up. Some way or another work, you know, Interview ends, you still haven't said, you say, oh, by, by the way, I wanted to ask you, you know, you, you've been, this, this guys are doing really great here. I, I'm just curious, where somewhere, where, where's a need here that you need met? Well, we, we, we don't have anybody that can work the late hours. We, we're, we're missing that. No one could do it. You know, Mike has a child and Susan, she, she's doing this. Oh, oh well, I, I would love the opportunity to help you with that. And that's it. So folks, perspective, performance. So performance is just be preparing yourself for what it is you want. Keep getting better, keep getting better, keep getting better, keep getting better. Last part, last piece, we got perspective performance is perseverance. And that is doing something despite of difficulty or delay in achieving success. You know why most grads fail coming out of full sale? This is real talk. I ain't making this up. They fail because they quit because they quit. You know, I'm going to tell all of you here at any given point, y'all can catch me on my social media handles. They're at demo Casanova. I don't, I don't do none of that stuff, but it's just for messaging. So if you ever have a question or something you need, you can reach me out there and I'll be more than happy to help you with whatever you need. I just have that just for full cigarettes. I don't do any social media whatsoever, but I, it's my easiest way to connect with everyone. I can't tell you how many grads even now, will send me a message and be like, man, I need to talk to you. All right, cool. What's going on, man? I, it's been so hard out here. It's here. I'll write it in the chat. It, it's been so hard out here. I've, I've been trying so hard to, to get a job and man, I, I just can't, 
I, I can't seem to land anything. Like I go to these interviews and they, they, you know, they seem to go pretty good, but they just, it's just no, no need. Well, I say, okay, my question is, well, how many of these have you done? I have done five. You done five. And I'd be, I thought I felt pretty good, but they just keep calling me back and saying that I, there's just no room for me. You know what I have them do? I have them make a list, 25 mile area around where they live. And I say, call everybody within that area and schedule interviews. And I want you by the end of the month to do 15 interviews. 15 interviews? Yeah, 15 interviews. Guess what? Without a shadow of a doubt, 10 out of 10 times, it works the same. They call me back and be like, man, I got a job. Yo, this stuff is really taking off. Six months later, like, man, I'm in the studio with so-and-so. I'm doing this with so-and-so. Yo, you don't believe it. I, I was a grip for so-and-so in this movie. I'm doing this now. You see, it's not no magic, the number 15 or whatever number is that I give them. It's just they're persevering. See, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always got. Meaning, if you knock twice and you leave, no one's going to answer the door. But guess what? If you keep knocking on the door, at some point, somebody is going to come home and open the door and ask you, what's up? <laughs> Most people go to their first couple. I'm going to tell you, the chances are most of you will go to your first couple of interviews and it's not going to work out for whatever reason. You're nervous or the person isn't just needs to fill a quota. They weren't even thinking about hiring anyone to begin with. They just needed to fill a quota because they need to see a certain amount of people to see what's in the what's what's in the workforce. And they leave saying, God, I am not worthy. Remember, event plus response equals outcome. They sit there and say, I'm not worthy. They're responding to the event of this person saying, we don't have a job as they're not worthy. And guess what? They believe that because we go back to belief. Remember Roger Bannister, what you believe, you get more of. You believe I'm not good enough. And then guess what? Nothing happens. It's if you just change the response and keep going, keep going. It is only a matter of time. I had a, a mentee. Her name is Morgan David. When um, she was one of my full sale mentees, I've had a couple and um, I, she's, this one is going to be, be legendary. I've had some really amazing ones the last couple of years. But Morgan came to me when she was a student and she said, I want to do what you've done. And I said, okay, what does that mean? She said, I, I want to be like how Marcella, I want to do what Marcella, who's another full sale grad, similar, me and her came up together. So me and her thick as thieves. And I said, okay, so I, me and Marcella, I got pulled Marcella and we started talking to him. We said, okay, this, this is what you need. She says, I want to work at the hip factory and I want to go see him. I told him, Morgan, that, that's really an old school way of thinking. And I, I don't even know if I would do that. I want to do that. She said, I want to do it. I'm going to move to Miami and I'm going to make it happen. Now, mind you, this girl's a single mom, was with an infant baby at the time, no support. And she was going to move to Miami with no money to go work at the hip factory, which I'm going to tell you, folks, the pay isn't all that great when you first start there. She was determined. At the two-year mark, which just came, folks, she's now working for Pharrell. She just got the gig working for Pharrell. Pharrell went, hired her. She is now working for Pharrell. That's her gig. If you stick to this, I promise you, without a shadow of doubt, because I have seen it time and time again, if you stick to it, within two years... If you haven't achieved your goal, you're within shooting range of it. Two years of concentrated effort with a clear perspective, constantly working on your performance and persevering through all the nonsense in between will get you to success. It is that simple. There is nothing real crazy about it. That's all you got to do. You look at where you're at. You say, okay, what is it there? Where is the need for what it is I can deliver? From there is, okay, how can I improve my performance? Preparation, study, who can I speak to? Who can give me guidance? See, that's what, that's, what, that's what Morgan did. She had a clear mental view of what she wanted. She said, I want to go be an engineer. I want to work at the hip factory. I want to do what Demo, Mar Demo Marcella did. It. Shoot, they're just like me. I'm going to do it. Then she worked on her performance. She kept getting better. She came and sought me out. She came and sought Marcella out. She ended up sawing Leslie out. She, she went to see everybody that was in audio. To say, okay, well, what else can I do? How do I do this? How do I do that? And then do all the stuff that went. And I'm going to tell you, it was tough. The girl really had a tough ride for a lot of it. 
She kept going. She never quit. She never quit. She never quit. She never, at one point, she almost got homeless. She almost became homeless. And luckily she didn't, but she was close and she kept pushing. Lots of times she would quit. I can't tell you how many times she called me and said, I don't know if I can do this. And I said, well, quit. Straight up. She called me and she said, oh, God, it's so difficult. I don't know if I, and I said, just quit. And I'd hang up on her. I knew she wasn't going to quit. People would be like, man, that's mean. No, it's not. Because I told her, I said, listen, if you, if you quit, you'll just, you'll just be really good at quitting. And it'll never happen. F you, demo. <laughs> and then she would go back and, 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 um, and crush it. Which, now look at her. She's living, living her dream. She's, she's going to be right up in the Hall of Fame without a shadow of a doubt, along with other grads that have really put it together. And just like she can do it, any of you can do it. Alexander, you can do it. Candice, you can do it. Denton, you can do it. Iman, you can do it. All of you can do it. Shoot. Trust me. Um, so simple. Any questions? Y'all open it up. Shoot me some questions here so we can. This is really about y'all. I left some time really just to kind of see where some of you were at and answering some questions on what is going on with y'all. Where is it that you feel that you're at? You can shoot it in the chat. You can put it in the Q&A. Anything you guys want to know, I'm an open book. While they are thinking of some questions, Demo, I would love for you to unpack a little bit something I get asked all the time in alumni relations. It's the approach of the mentor, right? You know, people are scared to ask people, will they be their mentor? They're scared to reach out. Can, can you talk about some of your preferred methods of the way people reach out to you, the, the tone of their, of their reach out, et cetera? Yeah. Um, well, me, me personally, I, I, I feel anybody that has enough courage to come ask me, I'm, I'm pretty receptive. You know, if you, you just got to ask. So a person like me, if you just ask, you're probably going to get a shot because I'm, I, I just was that person for a long time where I was very cocky when I first started in my career. And I was always, people kind of looked at me sideways. So I didn't have bad intentions. I wasn't trying to be like that. It was just the way my personality came off. So I'm, I'm open to anybody that comes to speak to me, no matter how they speak to me. However, in my experience with other people here, here are the things that can rub people the wrong way. One is obviously cockiness. So going to an established producer, I, I, I laugh at it now because I, I find it endearing that someone says to me, yo, man, they're in school and they're like, yo, man, you know, I'm a producer. And I, and I sit there and it's like me, Leslie, and like Phil Tan or someone. And it, we kind of laugh at it. Um, it's kind of know your audience. You know, if I'm going to go speak to Madonna, you know, who is a producer and a songwriter, I'm, I, I humble myself. You know, you want to humble yourself amongst people. So you want to say, you know, it's always great to research the person you're going to speak to. That's always been my secret to getting people to give me uh, some, some time really is I know something about them. So I say, listen, you know, like if I'm talking to Leslie, I say, Leslie, I just saw you did the new Cardi record, man, you did what, man, that record sounds so good. You know, um, how did you get that? How did you get that sound like that? Like, how, how did you get to a place like that? Because it's just incredible, the stuff you've done. So I give them praise. I research a little bit about them to let them know, like, oh, my God, this person actually. Now it's easy because you can just do it on your phone. So if you see somebody you're like, oh, that's so-and-so, you just look them up. OK, uh, oh, you just did that. OK, cool. And then you use that. But humble yourself. And then if you want that person to give you some advice, set it up. Don't just come in and be like, yo, man, get me a job. I can't, y'all you, you, might laugh at that. I know some of y'all are probably smirking at this, but I can't tell you how many people come up to me or text me. One girl just did this recently. I'm not going to put her on blast because she's, she's a really sweet girl, but she just hit me out of the blue and she was just like, I saw you talk a couple, uh, two years ago. Can you give, get me a job? Can you give me a job? Most people would just turn that off. I called her and I was just like, what's going on? And, you know, she'd been through some hardship. She didn't really know what to do, but that, that attitude isn't going to get her far. Because she's in a place of me, me, me. If you want someone to mentor you, you got to do, it, it goes back to the same thing. Where is the need for this person? Why should this person spend time on you? So I always start with, is there something I can do for you, man? Is there like, how's your social media? Do you need some help with that? Do you, do you need some help with, um, do you need your groceries? Right? Like, what can I do for you, man? So good attitude, a little bit of research, and then 
repay, don't just get, try to give in any way you can. Good? Katrina, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm going to use that sound bite. I'm using this, I'm going to use this video to play <laughs> for my okay. alumni who's struggling with that. That's perfect. Nice. I got, oh, we got some questions here. Let's see. William says, along with skills, I'm entertained through full say, are there any outside skills or opportunities you recommend we focus on? Yes, absolutely, William. Here's a couple of them. Um, language. The way you speak linguistics is really, 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 really important. So these are like more, what, see the skills that you build at Full Sail, they're, they're great in a lot of ways, but the things that are necessary to get you through the door are, are kind of things that we are supposed to learn through life. So the biggest one is work on having a good attitude at all times, especially like when you're having a really messed up day. I'm trying not to curse. I keep forgetting we're here, but like having like a really effing day, bad day, just like having a good attitude, especially when you're at work. Um, things like dressing appropriately, you know, like these things sounds really stupid, but trust me, it, it comes up a lot. Like um, organiz organizational skills is one that is very useful in any industry. Like being able to have an organizational system is a good one. But mostly I would say it's just attitude. Attitude is the biggest one that if you focus on that one, will, will it will get you to any job anywhere that you want, hands down. Hope that helps. Uh, let's see. What advice would you, Carly, what advice would you offer someone who is trying to completely change their behavior and habits? Well, behavior and habits come from, from a lot of things. And we're not going to get into the, the, the backstory, which is conditioning, environment. The best way to change a behavior and habit is through repetition that I found. So, for instance, if you want to build a habit of going and eating better food, let's say, or, or taking, building better, healthier habits. So you start small. So you say, what are the main habits? I want you, well, I want to eat, but I want to be healthier. So what does healthier mean to me? Okay. Well, I, I'm not drinking enough water and I'm eating really poorly. So now we're going to build a new habit of eating better. So first thing you do is we look at what are the habits you're going to remove or the behaviors. So I'm going to remove, um, eating fast food. Let's say that's it. Right. Carly, in order for these to change the habits, here's something that's fundamental that we never really learn. And it's super important. Whatever habit you're going to remove, you have to replace it with a good habit. So it doesn't work. You just cutting fast food. You got to replace it with something else. So every time I'm going to eat fast food, I'm going to go have a salad. So anytime I get the urge to go have fast food, I'm going to eat a fruit plate, whatever that is for you, whatever healthy is for you. If you don't replace the bad habit, there's this thing called the law of vacuum, which means it will just get filled in by another bad habit. So instead of eating fast food, you'll eat fried food, whatever it is that, that equals bad for you. So consistency, which is consistently do the, the habit that's opposite of what you want. So if you're eating bad food, eat good food whatever that is for you and just stay with it. And remember, whatever habit you remove, just replace it with a good habit and be conscious about it. And, and you'll be off to the races. Uh, Chantanel, how do I become an anonymous backup singer? Where can I put music into where I could put music into my pedigree An anonymous backup singer? Well, listen, start reaching out to people that you want to be a background singer too. That's what I would do. Just start reaching out to people. Make a list of 20 people that you want to sing backgrounds for. Now, you, you can go and try for the Ariana Grandes and those of, up, or, or you can just start small. Just say, you know, just start with people in the area. Find out local bands in the area that you can perform for. Um, but hit a wide net and then start building those relationships. I mean, you could put music out and distribute music yourself, and that's one way to do it. Um, I find that to be more of a crapshoot personally. Like, you, you know, you could, you could hit the lotto. Anybody can hit it if you play it. But I, I like more, more sound strategies. So it's like reach out to the people you want to do backgrounds for, build relationships for them, and then ask them, you know, where's the need? Listen, do you, do you have a need for a background vocalist that has this kind of range and has these kind of styles? Well, no, not really. Well, have you thought about it? 
well, I don't really know if it would fit. Well, if it would fit, would you consider it? You see what I did there? Like, I didn't just allow them to, like, shoo me off, which is someone says, no, I, I don't need a background singer. Well, if you did, would this style work for you? No. Well, what style would work for you? Well, we need somebody who has a more gospel soul route. Well, if you had someone with more gospel soul, would you give them the opportunity? Yeah, sure, we would. Well, great, I have that. How about you give me the opportunity? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, perseverance. But yeah, make a list and then, and, and then go from there. Let's see here, Keith. I'm at the very beginning of my career. I have a few songs in your catalog. Just sold them. Oh, I have a few songs in my catalog and just sold them last week. Congratulations. That's awesome. Is to have your email or is there a better way to network with you? That's my only question. Oh, well, the best way to, to network with me is just do my social media handles because it's whenever I go and I check there, I'm in that mindset. I'm a bit of like a digital nomad. I just kind of move around from place to place. So it's not, I don't, I don't, I didn't have a cell phone for like 10 years. I half the time don't even know where the one I currently have is. So, but through my handles, if you just hit me on a message and just be like, Hey, this is Keith. I was at your talk and just whatever you want to chop it up about, I'll respond. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time, but I always will respond. So that's the best way. Iman, I've been studying music for over 25 years. For the past 10 years, I've been building a music platform for LBGT women in hip hop. I came back to school because music is entertaining and the players are different. Any suggestion on locating the players in my super niche market? I'm building a music video countdown show. Well, that's that's awesome. I'm trying to think of suggestion of locating players in your market. Well, Unions are a good good place to start if you're looking for players specifically. Um, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to do some research on that. Hmm. Man, I don't really have a good answer for you at this time. Let me hit me up on my handles and let me do some research and get back to you with that, and I'll work on that for you. Cool. Let's see. Anybody? Oh, we have some here in the chat. I don't have a question, but uh, how can you add value to the relationships beginning of any approach? Oh, I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you. You really helped me immensely. Oh, Lily, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm just reading some of your things here. Okay. Oh, here we go. Does gaining real world experience in your field before graduation, if possible, the opportunities like internship make it easier while searching for a job? Well, yes and no. Here's here's why. Gaining real world experience in your field before graduation can help. Where it doesn't help is when it affects you while you're in school. So for instance, there's there was a couple kids that I met last time I was on campus that were like doing front of house sound at a couple of clubs. They were doing X amount of jobs at a church. They were doing all this work, but yet they were on academic probation. So you have enough real world experience at school while you're at school. That's enough to get you to the interview process. Now, does it help? Sure. It, it can help. It definitely can help, but it's not going to help if your grades and your, your, your performance at school drops because of it. So that's, you just need to balance that out. That's my, my take on it is just have more balance. If you're going to work somewhere, don't try to do everything at once. Just get one place, but make sure it doesn't affect your schooling because you're, you're paying for that. And it's quite important that you, that you nail that out of the park because that's what, that's what they're going to look at that the, the stuff you have afterwards can help you. Like for instance, when I left Full Sail, I never worked while I was at Full Sail, but when I left, I started doing like local stuff and that stuff didn't help me get my job at the Hit Factory or any of the other jobs, but it did help me sharpen my skills. So anytime you can sharpen your skills, you know, I say go for it. Just don't let it affect school. School right now needs to be the important thing because once you need to like make sure that's top and bottom, you knock it out the park so you can transition to the next thing. New to full sale studying audio production. I play no instruments and do not sing. Would you recommend learning to play an instrument to help be successful? And if so, what instrument do you recommend? 
Charlie, check this out. I, 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 I'm be real with you. Most people don't know this. When I went to full sail, I played absolutely no instruments. I was like tone deaf. Like I, I w- didn't understand key. And I thought I had rhythm because I was a dancer when I was little and found out like after I left full sail that I really had no rhythm. So yeah, it was, it was, it was bad. So if I could go back, I would have definitely learned to play an instrument because I had to learn about key and everything. And it, it took me a while but I had great teachers depending on what it is. I I'm into rhythm. So like drums and percussion are the instruments that I favor. However, obviously guitar and piano understanding them gives you a good understanding of musical theory and key. So if you're going to learn an instrument and you're going to invest time, I say learn the instrument that you're going to dedicate to practicing and getting better at. So it's great to say, yeah, go learn piano. But if you're going to spend 10 minutes a month, it's not going to really do it. But if learning the flute or brass or something is something you've always wanted to do, then learn that. Or if you're like, I don't really want to practice or do any of that. I'd rather spend my time in front of software or live or logic or, or I don't know, an MPC live or Ableton, then make that your instrument. I was a DJ for most of my life, but I never really considered it an instrument until I went to Full Sail. And I was like, oh, these guys, DJs are considered instruments yet, but I I never really practiced. So I didn't really consider it an instrument until after I left Full Sail. That's kind of what I use. So there's pick something you're going to practice and get better at and you'll excel. It's pretty much that easy. Katrina, do you have another question for me? Yes, absolutely. We, we have so many grads who ask, what should my next move be? And I love how you said before you graduate research, you know, the top areas that you want to go into. So think of back to when you were first getting out of full sale, can you share what you had researched and decided for sure I want to do and how that worked out? What kind of roadblocks did you hit and how did you persevere through those? Yeah, I, I, I still, when I, speak to the students i still think it's it still works it worked for me and i still think it'll work for anyone which is narrow it down and i i didn't know much when i went to full sail about anything i was at the university of florida and then i knew i didn't want to like work in an office and i always loved music like i hinted earlier i was a dj for like a local dj when i was younger so i was like i always had this thing with music and then I found out about Full Sail. So I showed up to Full Sail. I dropped out of college and I, and I showed up to Full Sail pretty much. And I had no idea. I didn't know what an engineer was. I thought I was going to Full Sail to learn how to make beats. <laughs> they didn't do that back then. So no, I didn't go there making beats. But I knew I wanted to be in a studio. And they had studios. So I was like, okay, this is, this is, this is something. So what I did was I just researched. I looked at all the records that I liked and all the CDs that I own. And I kept seeing the same name pop up, Hit Factory. And I saw Hit Factory New York, Hit Factory, Hit Factory. So I researched, saw those Hit Factory New York. So I was like, oh, that's where I'm going to go. And then I saw Hit Factory Miami. I was like, oh, I'm from Miami. That's where I'm going to go. So I just narrowed it down. I personally, when I look back, feel that I could have went to any studio and it would have worked because it was not so much the place. It was me going in there with the mentality of I'm going to make this happen. So research just just look research ask find if you're into movies and you like animated movies and you love pixar then find out where pixar is find out who works at pixar find out you know if if you like you know star wars and marvel and that's the kind of stuff you want to do well then okay well where's where's this skywalker ranch place at who are the grads there like what do i need to do to get there and narrow it in the sooner you narrow it in the more energy you put to it meaning the more time and resources to making that happen and the more it has to happen because you're putting time and resources to it so i like to use the acronym focus which means follow one course until successful it's been my model through most of my life is like i just stick to one thing and stick to it until I get it to where I want. You know, this streaming business, my, I hinted it to you earlier, but when I, my first month, which was April of my new streaming business, I made $700. Some of y'all going, damn, bro, that's not bad. Your first business. Yeah. But I had to spend $8,600 on gear 
because I ain't own none of the cameras. I ain't know I ain't know none of this stuff, man. So seven hundred dollars, but I was down, you know, eight. So I was down seventy nine hundred. Like I've been constantly doing that. I said I want to make because I know this is gonna be some. Yo, last month I had a fifteen thousand dollar month. My contract got extended not only through December, but we're now renegotiating for the following year. Like my number didn't go down. It's going up. Now, mind you, I started at, at negative 7,900, but because I kept focusing on it, I kept persevering like, man, I'm taking this out. How can I improve? What do I need to do? What do I need to get? Okay. How do I make this happen? What do, what do, who do I need to speak to to get better at this? Oh, I'm paying too much for camera guys. I need to be able to work the cameras by myself. How do I do that? 15,000 is pretty good. Trust me. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's nice to have that coming in, you know, for, and, and let me tell you, it's only two days of work. I'm doing a month to earn that. So something to keep in mind. What type of mental health practices did you do for overcoming adversity? <coughs> well, I, um, I have a sign. You can't see it. It's on my door. It says, if you're not willing to pay the price, you don't deserve the rewards. So, Whenever I be, get to adversity, I remember that. I say, well, I always have the choice of quitting. I can always quit. But then how many, it's like, how many cigarettes do you need to smoke to be a smoker? One. How many things do you need to quit to be a quitter? One. So I'm not saying it. Sometimes it, it makes sense to quit. <laughs> Sometimes it does. But when it comes to your goals and the things you want to do, it, it, it's never really, a, it's not really the option you should be entertaining. So when I have adversity, I look at it and I look at it and I say, okay, where's the hurdle here? What's the problem? Okay. The problem is I don't know enough. It's, it's usually one of the first things that come up. I don't know enough. So I work around that. I look at the things that I can control and then I focus on those things. And then as I'm focusing on those things, the things that seem this that build up this mountain of adversity, it ends up crumbling down to a little hill because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. And a lot of times the problems we're so locked in on them that they seem humongous. But if we take a step back and look at the factors that we can control, things change. Mental health is extremely important in lots of ways because if you don't have the right mental health not only can you have mental fatigue and all other things but eventually obviously your health can go sideways so i take deep breaths i meditate i haven't been recently because i've been moving around a lot but i usually meditate you know half an hour 30 minutes 20 minutes just a little bit of time and if you're not into meditating you know just take some time to just stay quiet stand still um if you're not into that you know exercising swimming Whenever I have a big problem or something that's driving me mad, I go for a walk. I think about it on my walk. I get outside. So things like that can help. But I always remember if like, listen, the only one that can make this happen is me. My mama can't do it. My sister can't do it. My brothers can't do it. My boys can't do it. My homegirls can't do it. No one can do it. It's on me. Like I want y'all to put, hold your hand up to your head like this. And say, repeat after me. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. Just say it. Even if you got to whisper it, just point your and say, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. That's it. It's up to you to make it happen. I can't do it. No one else can do it. You got to do it. So adversity comes around. Take a step back. Let it breathe and say, okay, now what? Where's the need? What do I got to do next? And that's it. Keep it moving. I see Alexander wrote, how do I keep myself focused on my goal when life requires me to have too many irons in the fire? Well, balance is a good one. But here's the deal. Like sometimes it's, it's easy for me to say, yo, you need to spend all your time on your goal. And that's not what I'm preaching. Reality is sometimes some of our lives, it doesn't, we can't do that. We have, we might have children. We might have to pay rent. We might have parents we need to take care of. We might have other commitments that that we need to do. I consider those the irons in the fire. So those things, you got to do what you got to do. But when it comes to your goal, it's like, what are you doing when you do have time? People say, I don't have time to work on my goal yet. They watch 90 minutes of Netflix every day. Well, yo, that's 90 minutes that you could be working on creating your goal. If you cut right now, the average American, 
is is averaging ridiculous amounts. But pre-pandemic, they were averaging five hours of television a night, the average person. If you take one of those hours and refocus it, you get nine 40-hour work weeks in the year. Do you know what you can do in nine 40-hour work weeks if you just focused on your goal? So, Alexander, it's really just looking at your time that you do have. So if the irons have to be in the fire, let them be in the fire. But you're not always in front of the fire fanning it. Sometimes you're out doing other things. When you're doing other things, that's when you need to reassess your time and say, how am I using this to get better at my goal? Cool. Wow, you know? Demo. This has been such an amazing session. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering how can they get a little more demo into their lives? Uh, in addition to your social handles, is there, are you streaming anything on YouTube they can follow anything so they can get a daily dose? Not, not, not currently, but I'm working on it. I've had a lot of requests for it. I'm just right now focusing on producing other folks events, but I will soon. So if you, if you hit me up on my Instagram and Facebook at some point, I will start, but I'm working on some real, real dope. That's like a, a bi-weekly thing. Um, it, could you share with this audience where, where you go for inspiration so that outside of this session, they can continue to grow? Yeah. Well, what I do is I, I look for inspiring people. So for me is I, I, I look a lot at things that are happening in other industries. Like I look at people like Gary Vaynerchuk and, and guys like, um, um, obviously like Tony Robbins, these kind of guys, like just try to find things that are inspirational and motivational and, you know, instead of just sitting there, whenever you're doing what I call downtime, like driving in the car, you know, it's cool to listen to music, but sometimes it's good just to listen to something and buy an audio book, a program, iPod, podcast, like anything that's inspiring that uplifts you. That's the fastest way to really get good at anything. And for me, I, I listen to a lot of people that are into motivational, kind of inspirational kind of stuff because it helps me reset. You know, we talked about the adversity thing. Like when I hear that kind of stuff, it makes me believe. Like I, I watch stuff on YouTube all the time. That's very inspiring. And I like hearing stories about people overcoming massive adversity. You know, people that are have no arms, no legs, climbing mountains. You know, it's like, okay, well, that that's that's kind of what I what I look at, you know. So just do some research. I, I like a lot of the old school guys like Les Brown. He's from Miami. He's one of my mentors. He's the guy who actually got me into the speaking business. Um, L-E-S-B-R-O-W-N. He is like, he's so cold as a speaker. Like you put him on, it's like going to church. He's just, he's, but he's the real deal. And uh, he's a legend. So I listen to him a lot. Um, and then guys like Jack Canfield, who is another a great speaker. He's a close friend of mine. So I, I listen to him a lot. Um, but yeah, just anything that resonates, resonates. Lou, Lou, uh, Lewis Howe, he has the School of Greatness podcast. That's that's a great place. He has a lot of great people on there. But yeah, just like this is this is something that will really help all of you to do is go through your Instagram feed, Facebook feed, whatever, whichever one you're, you're, you spend the most time on and go through and like look at the stuff that's coming in on your feed and get rid of the stuff that's nonsense and go and put people in there that's inspiring. Like I have like Draymond John from the dude from FUBU from Shark Tank. Like I have all the Shark Tank people. Like I'm never on Instagram, but when I go on there and I look at my feed, it's either like people that I, I, I love and want to know more about, or it's really inspiring people. So every two or three, like I'll get a dose of something really quick. So even though I'm not on there long, when I'm on there, it's showering me with some, some dope. So that's a good way to do it. Cool. Thank you so much for this amazingly inspiring conversation. Uh, we do have a later today, a meet and greet with demo. So if you want more demo, please sign up for that. We'll see you this afternoon, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, demo. Appreciate you. Thank you. And listen, I'll, I'll close with this is that um, thank you all for coming. I, I know you all have a lot going on and I truly, truly appreciate it. I wish I could be in the room with y'all and hug y'all and tell you how great you are and, and that everything will be all right. But listen to what I'm telling you, I've been doing this for a long time and I do know this is that you're exactly where you need to be. No matter what it may seem, no matter how things may look like your time is now, like it is not a catastrophe that is happening. It is an opportunity for your greatness to step up and the world needs what you got. 
They don't need another ne- demo. They don't need another Leslie. They don't need another Steven. They don't need another nothing. They need the Alexanders, the Alexas, the Candices, the Charlies, the Kellys, the Carlies. They need the Jennifers of the world. They, they need those in the world. And you got some greatness in you. Like, let it out. Don't get caught up with all the nonsense. Just stay focused on what you're doing. Remember to keep perspective in your life. Continue to perform at a high rate and persevere. And if you do, great things will be coming. I look forward to seeing you down the road. And come see me at 2 o'clock. We'll continue the conversation. I appreciate you all. Love you all. And thank you very much for being here.